Holy crap. Holy crap. Holy crap. Holy crap. Holy crap. What is up, Remnant community? This is Kirk the Stampede. Today, I want to tell you how to get the two most overpowered, arguably, consumables in the game. In-depth guide. This is going to be long. This took me a long time to edit, so I am definitely going to be putting timestamps down on the bottom, especially for people who have, may have already gotten one, might not have gotten the first, whatever the case may be. You'll be able to find your spot. Maybe you have some of the steps already completed, so you can go through and uh, just pick and choose what you need. But I tried to go as in-depth as possible on this. The reason I made this video is because I had trouble doing this originally, and there was basically nothing online. So I had to uh, really take some time to, to, to figure out how to do this to completion. Ended up not being as hard as I was making it in my head. But before we get to that, I just wanted to say thank you guys so much. My, my first video, the, the healer build video, absolutely exploded. I expected to, legitimately I expected to upload that video you know, 30 people are like, yo, this build is cool. Uh, you know, get less than 100 views. And that's all that I wanted. That was fine. But for some reason, you guys actually liked it a lot, <laughs> apparently. So I appreciate it so much. So many comments. So many people liked it. So many people subscribed. So thank you. Thank you a lot for that. It was it was exciting. It was in, it was energizing. It, I immediately started working on other videos. You can see I've got two videos since then, and I really wanted to do something even more for you guys above and beyond that video. So that's what made me come up with the idea of this. But enough of my babbling. First up, we are going to talk about Thane fruit and the Thane fruit tree. What is Thane fruit? Thane fruit is actually this really badass consumable. You can carry three of them that will auto revive you if you're dead. I actually saw someone do this early in, in, in the games, like, you know, the, maybe the first two weeks that it came out. And I was like, this guy's hacking. Why is everybody hacking? If you're playing online, joining randoms games, my rule of thumb now is if you think it's hacking, they just have a really good build. <laughs> Most people aren't cheating. I remember seeing somebody with 20 relics and thinking they were cheating until I got the, the lifeless relic or whatever it's called. And I was like, oh, I'm just an idiot. But anyways, there's three different types of Thane fruit. That's the, the first consumables we're talking about. The three types are mature Thane fruit, elder Thane fruit, and celestial Thane fruit. Now, what these actually do is auto revive you if you go down. And the difference between these is the mature Thane fruit revives you with 30% of your HP. The elder Thane fruit revives you with 40% of your HP. And the celestial Thane fruit revives you with 50% of your HP. Not only get self-revived, but you're immune to status effects immediately after, as you can see. Now, I don't know if being staggered is a status effect. That would be something, that I haven't tested it, but it would be something that I would like to test or, you know, if you know, let me know down in the comments uh, if because that would be huge if you could not be staggered all to, to hell in Lawsome, which is the worst. So how do we actually get the Thane fruit? Well, what we need to do is we need to find the Thane seed in Yesha. Is going to be on this map. You see this is the Red Throne start. Now, the Red Throne start, there will be something called the Widow's Court, and that's right here on the left. So when you roll your adventure, make sure that this is what your map looks like. And coming right up, I'll have a video. I, the maps do procedural generate, so it might be slightly different, but follow my general path, and you'll be able to find these items. So let's get into Yesha.
All right, so now that we have the key and the box, we are going to insert the key into the box. And bam, it's that easy. I don't know why I didn't do this sooner, that, but that's why I'm making the video. So if you guys are still kind of early in your game, this is going to be huge for you guys. So now that we have the seed, we are going to take it over here to the little garden area. My tree's already grown. Yours won't be there. There'll be a little plot where that person is digging and you just plant it. And uh, over some time, it will grow into the tree and you can pick it. As a little bonus, I'm gonna show you guys the ripened heart. Um, if you let it sit for a while, whenever you do get uh, a seed and you don't pick it, it, I think it's like the maybe the third time you get a celestial fruit, which is the, the longest sitting one, the one that takes the longest, uh, it will actually be the ripened heart instead of the celestial fruit. So that's how you get that heart. So now you're done. You have your tree. Uh, you're going to be growing thane fruit. And you'll get different tiers of it depending on how long you wait to pick it. Uh, just to let you know, if you do pick it and say you have a mature thane fruit already in your inventory and you pick that anyways, you will just get scrap for it. So keep that in mind. You can only have one of each kind in your inventory at a time. Another quick side note, something that's good to mention uh, before I get this question in the comments, this will persist beyond you re-rolling your campaign. So you do not ever have to worry about losing this tree. You're safe. It'll be there forever. That's why this is so OP. Now go have fun never dying again. At least that's what one can hope. But, you know, we're playing Remnant, so. <laughs>
uh, where I had it in Morrow Parish, and then here is what the entrance looks like to Tiller's Rest. So what you want to do is go in the circle around the map. Uh, I had already finished this one, but when you're at about this area, you will see, uh, I'll shoot it, but you'll see a, like a ghost looking entity. Like you'll definitely know it's what you're looking at. It wasn't here for me because I had already completed it on this roll, uh, but it'll be around this area. You just need to walk through it. It'll possess you and then you'll take it to the end of the map and you're done. Now, next up is going to be the one of two bosses that you will get as your first boss in Mara Parish role. This one is the Bloat King. Uh, this is going to be at the end of the Great Sewers. And as you can see through the power of editing, we can one shot it and you are done. Next up is going to be Postulance Parlor. And we're going to find that in the next area after the first boss called Forsaken Quarter. And the map itself, once you go through the door, is called Postulance Parlor as well. All you really need to do is you're going to run around this area until you find a guy sitting at like what looks like a chess table. Kind of like a wizard's chess table. And I got lucky. Um, I'm really not that smart. <laughs> I'm not really good at board games. So I got super lucky that I just happened to get it in a good area. I think this does change up. Uh, it might not be the same board start for you, but if it is, just do exactly what I did. Uh, once you beat this guy at his game, basically all you have to do is get three in a row, whether it's diagonally, horizontally, vertically, and you win. Once you do that, the quest will be complete, and you're good to go to the next. All right, next we have the council chamber quest. This will be the quest with the three counselors. Um, some of you might've seen it before. I actually got this one as my second door in my the same for second quarter as the last one. So the second area after the first boss that you fight. And this is what the entrance looks like. Basically, all we're gonna do is we're going to go and listen to these counselors babble for a minute. Um, we're just going to talk to him to start the quest. That is what you are. Step to the podium. A foreigner. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 blah. It lives in our kingdom, does it not? I at least Let me in. what it might have to say. They want you to figure out who's the traitor. So basically, you're going to go to this, continue through the path of the mission, find this mirror, go to the shadow realm, or whatever you want to call it, back to the council chamber, council chamber. And you are going to pick up all of these keys. Now you want to look at the mirror on the floor. And that will tell you what order to put these keys back in. So the first one will be green. Second one will be the red key. And the last one will be the purple key. Pretty sure that'll be the same. Once we've done that, we'll go through the big door that opens in front of us. And here we see the dead king that they want us to find out who assassinated him. Go ahead and jump back here and grab this assassin seal. And then we'll jump back behind the king where he has been stabbed in the back with the assassin's dagger. Now that we have that dagger, we're going to go back, kill yourself, go back, or just walk back. Um, you're going to inspect the dagger back in the regular realm and you can see a certain crest is on the bottom this crest is going to correspond to one of the three counselors when you look at the keys you can see which one it is so this one is the guy in the middle so you just go through the dialogue you'll tell him you know uh, who the assassin is 
They'll say you have proof. They'll ask you which one it is, and you do the answer that is matching the bottom of the dagger. Preposterous. And he doesn't like that he's being called out. But uh, that doesn't matter. The other counselors are going to go ahead and mark him, mark him real quick. And that's all you got to do. You're done. Right. Conversely, you can also say the wrong thing to them, and then they will want to fight you and kill them all. Uh, but I just did this for the sake of time. I should not be great. Yeah, no. Next up is going to be Magister Dulian. Dulian? Dulian, something like that. I don't know how to say it, but basically this one, you don't have to worry. It's just going to be one of two of the second bosses that you, I'm just going to go ahead and one shot him real quick if y'all don't mind. And now directly after whatever second boss you get, uh, it is important to note, you'll have to grab the soul key tribute. That'll be important in a minute when we go to fight the next boss. All right, next up is everybody's favorite, the Night Weaver. So this is going to be the final boss of the Morrow Parish roll in Lawsome, no matter what. So uh, this will just be the last place you go if you roll Morrow Parish. We're going to take that Soul Key tribute to the bottom of the asylum. And put that in this sort of freaky doodad here. It looks like a web. And then we're going to re-interact with it afterwards to go into the upside down. And once we're in the upside down, we're just going to go out back and probably one shot the boss. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> okay. Too easy. All right. And next is the burning event, the burninating event. Uh, and this is going to be in Mara Parish. I rerolled my campaign at this or my adventure. I keep saying campaign rerolled my adventure at this point back to Mara Parish. This shows it was a little side quest door in my Mara Parish rerolls, the first door I found. And you'll know it, it's the right door because it'll have this burning outside. So you can kind of, you can kind of see the vibe changing. They're giving you a hint. But there's two different places that are burning. Um, and one is Butcher's Quarter. So just make sure it's that. Just because it's burning doesn't mean it's the right one. But once you get to the end find the crystal you'll see this event basically you have two choices you can either let them burn this guy or you can stop them and play a little uh, like wave based survival game where you shoot everybody running up and you just want to make sure that those guys with the torches don't light that on fire I barely completed it on the save the guy version and you're done Right, and at this point, I'm just going to go to the next boss, Gwindle the Unburnt. So this is one of two of the first bosses you can get in Mara Parish roll. And this is the other burnt area you can tell from outside. The only difference is going to be you'll have the square door, so you know you're going to the main boss area. And we might just go ahead and one-shot her, I don't know. Um, yeah. What are you going to do? All right, next up we have Drea's Quest. And this one is going to be another reroll back to Mara Parish in the area before the first boss. And the door will be Harvester's Reach. So you want to be looking for Harvester's Reach. It kind of looks like the entrance to the Great Sewers where you got to go down. Um, except it won't be a square door. It will be a circle top door or an arched door. And I'm talking about on your mini-map, not the actual physical door itself. So once you're in here, you want to talk to old dude. We were taken. Assumedly Drea's husband. But I didn't see a wedding ring, so... We don't want to make assumptions. Maybe it was just kind of complicated between them. But basically what you're going to look for are these giant piles of bones with the little squiggly things on them. The little doohickey squiddy looking things until you find this one you 
be in a different area also. I don't know if this is based off you killing the other ones as well, and then it pops up, or if you can just find this one. But I just want to one-shot that boss real quick, get Drea's anklet, and then come back here and talk to old dude again, and that's quest complete. Once you give him from anklet. All right, and now we're gonna do the feast event. Now, this one is pretty gross, uh, but I found it in the Forsaken Quarter after the first boss on this roll. And the actual place is called the Great Hall. Uh, once you go through the door. So you wanna find this spot, go to the top floor and you'll find this ravenous medallion. Ooh. Ravenous, you say. Go back downstairs, you can kill yourself or just run back down, put the medallion in the door. And then you want to just eat some of this food. You don't want to, but you have to. You know what I mean. And then this will spawn a uh, kind of a wave survival. You actually have to either eat some of the people that come in or more of the food on the table. All right, and next is the Red King. So on this roll, it was just my second boss. That's one of two of the second bosses that you can get. And this boss fight is going to be easy peasy salad caprizi. No, it is not. Uh, but you can actually give him some coins too. I've never done it before. I didn't really care. I just beat him to death with the assassin's dagger uh, on my first one because I wanted his helmet. And last but not least, we have Phelan or Feyrin. This one's a cool one. You can kind of choose. But this will be the first one that I actually rerolled to Palace Courtyard because it's a pain in the ass. Uh, but all you need to do is completely go through Palace Courtyard and get to the final boss. And that will be the Feyrin or Phelan fight, which you can pick. You can pick which one you want to fight. You'll have both the masks on the little plate to open the big door. And then if you spin that plate around it will choose which one you want. Now, it doesn't matter which one you fight. Beat either one, and it will actually give you the quest complete that you need. There we go. There we go. We're done. Let's go back to the Quilt Lady now. All right, now we're back at Quilted Northern's house, and you can see that our quilt is complete. We have done them all. Wasn't that a slog? And we just talk to her, and she gushes about how amazing we are. You, and there we go, we have the all-seeing eye. The you did it. You got it. Before you can talk to the quilt lady at all, even if it's finished, you do need to find a couple of kids that are scattered around the Morrow Parish, around the orphanage. So find them, and they'll lead back. They're real easy to find if you look at your mini-map and see the little blue circle. So just kill enemies around, lead them back. <laughs> yes and then you'll be able to complete it. Guys, I appreciate you watching this guide. Hopefully it helped you get uh, the Thane Fruit Tree if you didn't already have it, or the All-Seeing Eye if you didn't have all of the quilt finished. Um, I'm gonna go wash the blood out of my eyes from staring at Da Vinci for four days straight editing this video. But if it helped you out, if you liked it, if it made you laugh at one point, or, or cry at any point like it did me, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, I'll be making more videos like this. I'm thinking about, uh, obviously I'm gonna do some more videos uh, beating all the bosses on Apocalypse with the homies, but I'm also want, interested in looking at Baldur's Gate 2. And then I'm definitely going to be looking at Armored Core 6. I've been waiting on that game for a very long time. So we can get some build videos in that as well. And in the meantime, if you guys have any questions about Remnant, throw them down in the comments. I'd love to answer them. I, I try to answer every single comment that I can but appreciate it for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Holy crap.